Your kids are going to learn to dislike you. Your kids are going to learn to resent you when you're setting a standard for them that you yourself will not meet. They're watching your every word. They're watching your every move. You are their hero until they can no longer expect heroic things from you. They will go find another hero. They watch us look in the mirror and break down ourselves in front of them. And how does that make them perceive themselves? The greatest honor would be my grown children coming to me for advice and wisdom because they know, man, I can trust my father because what he says, he believes. What he says, he practices. What's happening, fam? I'm back this week with my favorite guest. She is an all-timer, and we're going to be talking about what happens when our kids don't like us, which if you got kids, you're going to experience that. But before we get into the show, I want to remind you that every week I publish a newsletter. Newsletter has information about the show, has information about upcoming shows. It even has things that we don't discuss in the show. You don't want to miss it. Subscribe at the link below. What's happening, fam? I'm so happy to be back this week with my favorite guest, my beautiful bride, Allison. Allison, how are you today? I'm doing great. Hey, every every day I try to text you three things. I don't, I, I don't get to it every day, but almost every day I try to text you three things. What are those three things I text you? I love you. Yeah. You're beautiful. Yeah. And I'm in love with you. Come on. I love you. You're beautiful. And I'm still in love still with you. Still in love with you. Yeah. yeah. I always want to remind you of those things. And I really am. I know. I love you. I think you're, I think you're an absolute smoke show. And I am still in love with you. And I'm so happy. You've been doing the shows the last few weeks with me. It's been awesome, hasn't it? Yeah. Come on, a little glimpse into our day to day. <laughs> a little glimpse. Like yeah. what it's like living and running with Big Harp. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> so we're still talking about kids this week. We're talking about our four kids, mm -hmm. right? We got four of them. Scarlett Joe. Mm -hmm. Did I pick her name or did you? We both kind of did. I think I got it though. I think I'm the one that brought it to the table. Malachi James, who was that? Are we? Really, I don't know. Was that? I think. I think Malachi was you. Malachi. Was it was me. between Titus and Malachi. Yeah. And we thought Titus was super kind of trendy at the moment. Yeah, that was. We no, didn't want a trendy name. No hate if you got a kid named Titus or. It's a great name. Green Bean or whatever is trending right now. Um, Calvin. Yes. Calvin John. I came up with it, and you were excited about it. I said, hey, look at that guy. His name is actually Calvin. Wouldn't that be a great name? And That's you were my like, favorite theologian. I know, but remember. You did. I give you that one. Yeah, but then you were like Calvin John. Yeah, I wanted Rooster. No. And that was before the Top Gun movie. No, you didn't Just want. Just clarify. Okay, first of all, no. Rooster was never in there. It was a, it was a, it was a wanted, dark horse. <laughs> it wasn't even close. It was a dark horse. And then um, the last one was Oliver. Yes. That's 100% you. Yeah, because you wanted Bo Cephas. W call him Bo? No. How Texas is that? That's as Texas as the day is long, babe. I said no. Bo Cephas? Bo? Yeah. Would have been amazing. It would have been horrible. But, 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 Oliver, but Oliver's good. <laughs> but Oliver's good. What's Oliver's that? great. All of our kids have literary names. Scarlet, Malachi, Calvin, Ollie, man. I love it. Yeah. My favorite thing about, one of my favorite things about being a dad is when I come home and they yell and they're so happy to see me. Sometimes when I'm in the driveway, I'm in my truck, like you can't even hold them back at the door. No, I can't. They got to come out because they cannot wait. Even the 12 year old, me. like even she, like yesterday when you were in the car talking to someone, she was like knocking on the window like, hey, hey, hey. Hey. I know it. I know it. I love that they can't wait to see me. But I also know that sometimes, and then probably more so in the future, um, they're not going to want to see me as much. Sometimes they might not even like me. Yeah. <laughs> and as parents, we all are going to go through that that phase where, you know, and maybe it's not as severe as your kid hates you or your kid doesn't like you, but they get to a point where they don't need you as much. And maybe right. you internalize that and feel like, well, maybe they don't want to be around me or they don't like me as much. I'm going through it with Scarlett right now. Up until probably age 11 or 12, she was daddy's girl. 
Mm-hmm. And we rode on the Gator together. We rode on the four wheeler together. We went to ball games together. Like if I was going to the store, she would want to go with me. But right. I've noticed in the last year, she always wants to be with you. Right. I want to go to the store with mom, or I want to stay with mom, or I don't need to go with you. Or and that's kind of hurt me a little bit. Well, yeah. I mean, if I'm being honest, right? She's she's mommy's girl right now. Now I've been told, like as she gets older, that'll come back around. Yeah. Like she'll come back around to daddy's girl. I'm banking on that. Like I don't know if that's scientific, but I'm banking on that because right now she's 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 vibing with you and mm-hmm. not so much with me. We're like this right now. Right. Well, and that happens. I mean, as a an oldest daughter. Okay. I mean, that's how it was with me and my dad. Yeah. I mean, me and my mom have always been super super close. Right. Um, especially in junior high and high school. Okay. Because that's the person you look up to. That's the person you want to emulate. That's the person that knows all the answers to your questions. Come on. I mean, you can't answer the questions that she wants answered. I don't want to answer all of them. And then, yeah. And so the same with the boys. That's right. The boys and I are all really close in a different way than you're close with them. Yeah, because there's some questions I'm going to have to answer. Exactly. Hey, but that's kind of convicting, though. Like, if she's really looking up to you and you're who she wants to be like as a mom, man, you better be living right. Right. You better be living right. I mean, that's like checking all the boxes, right? Kindness, modesty, right? I see all these. I see all these people complaining today about how these young girls dress. Mm -hmm. Man, look at how their moms dress. Where do you think they learn this stuff from? I saw a post yesterday that says. when they're little, we always tell them how beautiful and how smart and how capable they are. Yeah. But then they watch us look in the mirror and break down ourselves in front of them. Mm. And how does that make them perceive themselves? Come on. Because the person that they look up to the most is saying, you know, I'm not smart enough. I'm not beautiful enough. I'm not thin enough. Come on. I don't have this. I don't have that. Um, so it is. It's showing your kids... Who, who we are and who we are in Christ is yeah. the only way to pers- so that they can see a great example. That's worth the price of admission right there. That's good. I mean, babe. I saw that post yesterday and I thought, oh my goodness, you know, what am I, how am I modeling this for Scarlett, for yeah. Malachi, for anybody? What yeah. I do during the day, how I react, how I see myself. Yeah. Um, do I think less of myself and do I vocalize it so that they can hear that? Come on. After I tell them that they're beautiful and that they're kind and yeah. that they're they're worth every minute of my time. Yeah, in the um, in the Better Man curriculum that we wrote, you know, we talk one of the weeks we talk about that as parents, like there are certain there are certain um, milestones for your children, right? And you can really you can you can kind of categorize them in these in these three ways. And again, you know, I love some alliteration, so I'm gonna hit them with three C's again, baby. I'm coming with three C's today. You and the C's. Well, I love the letter C. So from really from birth to about to about age six or seven, Mm -hmm. you're really the caregiver, right? You're really the caregiver. Your your children's um, livelihood. I mean, literally, they're living and moving depends upon you. Mm -hmm. You've got to be there to take care of them. And we know science has told us, psychology has told us, like those are some of the most formative years. Like if your presence is not there through those years, it can be super destructive. Right. So really from zero to six or seven, you're kind of the caregiver, right? Mm -hmm. From seven to about to about eighteen, really. So you got like a you got like an eleven year period there. You're you're more of a coach. So you're really trying to model. It's what you're talking about. You're, you're coaching your kids up. The Bible calls that training your kid up in the way that they should go. Right. So you're modeling and you're, and you're teaching and you're instructing, right? De- Deuteronomy 6, when you wake and when you lie down, write it uh, on your forehead, right, which is your inner life. Write it on your gates, which is your outer life, right? You're instructing in all those things, man. You're, you're able to look at your kids and say, hey, follow me as I follow Christ, follow me as I live right. Follow me as I better the world, right? So you're really, you're really coaching. And then from 18 on, you, you, you kind of become this consultant. And really every parent wants to do that. Like, right. like I want my kids when they get older to come to me for wisdom and for guidance. I want my, my 28 year old daughter that before she marries somebody, I'd love for her to ask my opinion. Right. 
Dad, what do you think about this guy? Because you know I'm going to give it anyways. Right. But I'd love for her to ask. I want I want my son, as he's thinking about career moves and he's thinking about um, um, college, I want my daughter, as she's thinking about career moves, whatever it is, like like we become this consultant. I think, I think that does a parent's heart good that their children would come back and ask for their wisdom. Exactly. Ask for their advice. So, so really, you're a, you're a caregiver, mm-hmm. and we're in that stage right now with a couple. We're coaching with a couple right now, and one day um, we'll become consultants. Mm-hmm. But even in all that, at all three of those levels, there are going to be times our kids don't like us because we're going to say things yep. that they don't want to hear. We're going to ask them to do and sometimes make them do things that they don't want to do. We see it with our toddlers. We say things all the time that our toddlers don't want to hear. We're making them do things that they don't want to do. And the way they look at us and cry sometimes, I think he's cussing me out in his head. He doesn't know those words, but I'm thinking, man, that's what he, he just killed me in his mind, right? Right. But here's the deal. I don't care. Mm -hmm. Right. My child's affection. Affection towards me in the moment does not determine who I am. Mm -hmm. It doesn't dictate my day. My day does not rise or fall on on if my child likes me or not. I am there to care for my child. Right. I am there to coach my child up. And I'm there to consult my child when they come of age. And guess what? They're going to ask my advice, and sometimes they're not going to like it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they're not going to heed it. That doesn't make me a bad parent. Doesn't make me a bad person, right? I think sometimes we're concerned too much whether our children like us or not. Mm. Do you see that? Yeah, I can see that a lot. Now, especially as our kids get older, Yeah, I can see that a lot. Um, like in friend circles and, yeah. and, and at the school we're I at mean, and stuff j- like just, that. Just in general. Yeah. Um, I mean, I see great examples of how people like us – don't care if our kids like us or not. And, 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 and but, let's qualify that, right? Our kids love us. Yes. And our kids know that they're loved. Yes. But we also know that our kids, I mean, my daughter wants a phone. She's not getting a phone. And she probably don't like the fact that I've said, you're not getting a phone. Yeah. But I think she respects okay. that decision because we've told her that's why. Right Come on, mock We've belly. told her many times you know, and she doesn't constantly ask us for the phone. She knows that what the answer is going to be. That's right. Um, but like the other day, um, Malachi is bound and determined um, that he wants his own space because he's the older brother. He doesn't want his brothers in his he's room. He's got his own room. Okay, hold on. But he wants to set up a gaming mm. system in his room. Not happening. I know. I told him that a million times. But he's just like, Mom, you're wrong. You're wrong. This is what we're going to do. And I said, okay, that's fine that you can think that that's wrong, but the answer is always going to be there's no TV and there's no gaming system in your room. Not at all. I mean, that's like a death sentence, letting your kid have a screen in the right, room. Right, right. How are you going to monitor that? Exactly. They're looking at crazy things. Some well, of you parents, you're watching this, you're letting your kids have screens in the rooms, and you're thinking you're either trusting your kid or you're thinking they're not. There are things that you can't even control that's going to come across I mean, get the screens out of the rooms. Get the right. screens out of the bedrooms. Right. Put screens in an open area where everything can be seen and everything can be monitored. Right. Sorry, I didn't mean to go on that no, side. No, I'm just no. saying, Keep like, going. he was he was just so mad and frustrated at me. And I said, it doesn't matter. And he's like, well, just wait till dad comes home because he'll know, da, 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 da. And I said, your dad is the one that put the rule in place. Come on. He's talking crazy. Yeah, he was talking crazy. Yeah. But the thing is, he wanted... He's going to mess around and sleep in the living room. I'm going to take his room away. That's what's <laughs> going to happen. Right. I'm going to have a gaming room. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you don't even play the video games, so I don't know what you're talking about. So I'm going to watch games. <laughs> oh, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. He's going to mess around sleep in the hallway. But I knew he didn't like me in that he didn't... He didn't like me in that moment, and I really didn't care because I knew he knew the rule. That's right. And we're not going to change. That's exactly right. Yeah, my goal is not to be my child's best friend. No. They got they got playmates. They got classmates. They got friends. I'm not here to be your best friend. At a certain point, I'm here to be your caretaker. Right. At a certain point, I'm here to be your coach. I'm here to train you up in the ways of the Lord. Right. And then I hope that you trust me enough at the end of that that you could, would consider me a wise consultant. 
right. a sage that you would come and want to get want to get information from me. Right. Right. And a big piece of that is how we treat our children. This is uh, I, I recently was invited to this thing where I was asked to speak <clears throat> to like these national leaders on parenthood, right? And and I'm I'm in the back of the room and these kind of experts are going around the room and then finally somebody asked me to kind of give my opinion. And it was interesting. I said, have you ever seen um, a professional dog trainer? And like everybody looked at me like I was the dumbest guy in the room. Like we talking about a professional dog trainer. I said, have you ever seen a professional dog trainer? They said, no. I said, it's interesting. Invite a professional dog trainer to your home and they spend 20% of the time training the dog and 80% of the time training the owners. Mm -hmm. I said, parenting is the same way. We're all focused on training these children when what we should be doing is training the parents. Right. Train the owners, right? That's a big thing, especially like as our kids get older. One of the problems I see, especially with these parents who want to be best friends with their kids, who want their kids to like them, is as their kids mature out of caregiving, mature out of coaching, mature into consulting, like they still treat them like they're caregiving. Right. I see 17-year-old boys that mom is still doing the laundry. 17-year-old boys, dad is still making the lunch. 17-year-old boys that are sitting inside playing video games while dad's out back cleaning the pool. I got zero time for that. Mm -hmm. No, as you age and as you mature, I'm going to treat you as such so that you can step into that. And guess what? I don't care if I hurt your little feelings. I don't care if I bruise your little self-esteem. Problem is you've got too much self-esteem. That's another lie we feed these parents and we feed our children, that we need to build up our children's self-esteem. Absolutely not true. We are all born into this world with too much self-esteem. We already think too highly of ourselves. The last thing you need to do is build up your child's self-esteem. That's the last. What you need to be doing is teaching your child to die to self and live for others, namely die to self and live for King Jesus. You know what I'm saying? I get like this at the house. I get preachy, don't I? Mm -hmm. Come on, we take up an offering. Oh, we are? No. Who gets it? (laughs) That's a a great question. (laughs) Who gets it? We got bills, baby. (laughs) We got lots of bills. (laughs) Oh, goodness. But yeah, it's, yeah. And I think that, Part of that problem with most parents is they want the easy way out. 100%. They're, you know, if you're sitting on your cell phone watching the Kardashians and drinking your glass of wine, of course your kids are going to do whatever they want. That's right. They're going to be on the screens and all that. But if you're, um, and I'm not saying that you have to be with your kids 24 7. Yeah. Um, Something I saw, another solid thing I saw the other day was, you know, there's this new amazing TV show called Bluey. And all I the parents, love some Bluey it's boy. the best, in my opinion, one of the best Crushing shows because it. it's a show for parents. But what people are trying to see is that Bluey's parents spend time with them, so much energy with these kids. That's right. But the thing is, that show only lasts eight minutes. That's right. That does not mean that Bandit and Chili are with those kids 24-7, giving them all their energy. Come on. They have jobs. That's right. They have chores to do. That's right. And if you watch any of them, they're doing chores. Yeah. But they take that time to be with their kids That's on it. their level, completely focused. That's it. And our kids don't need all of our time. They have to be independent. They That's have right. to be able to do their laundry, do their chores, do some of their schoolwork That's by right. themselves, or they won't be a, a wonderful human when they get out of our house. Right. But when they do need us, we need to be there. We need to be we there. We need to be focused. And that's huge for this show because we're talking about when our kids don't like us or when our kids resent us. And let me tell you when your kids are going to resent you is when what you preach doesn't line up with what you practice. We talked about that last week. We talked about congruency, right? Right. Your kids are going to learn to distrust you. Your kids are going to learn to dislike you. Your kids are going to learn to resent you when you're setting a standard for them that you yourself will not meet. Right. That's the problem. I'm telling you, and I told the line on this because I demand things from my kids. Mm -hmm. I expect things from my kids. Well, one of the reasons why I do that is because it keeps me in line, right? Because I know I'm never going to ask my child to do anything that I'm not willing to do tenfold. Right. 
I'm not going to ask my child to read the Bible if I'm not reading the Bible. Right. Right. I'm not going to ask my child to, to be kind to others if I'm not willing to be kind to others. The reason why we set a standard in our house and the reason why we're not interested in becoming your best friend is because we're going to call you to live up to that standard. And we're going to challenge ourselves to live up to that standard. This is huge. Mm-hmm. A lot of people watching this, you're, you're feeling resentment from your child, not by not because of something you've done to them, but it's something that they've seen you not do, mm-hmm. something they've seen you not live up to. Right. It's this, it's this standard that you're trying to set around your house that you yourself aren't even meeting. Right. And I'm telling you, that is so key to, to raising healthy, successful young adults. They have to see congruency in your life. I can't say it enough, babe. Right. And they know. They catch you at it so fast. Oh, it's unbelievable. I mean, you, especially when you're disciplining a child about something and you're not meeting that standard yourself. That's right. They will catch you in it so fast. That's that's right. I can't. My own daughter will call me out. And it irritates me at first, but now I'm kind of digging it, right? Because I know there's, and if you think your children are never watching, they are always watching. Mm-hmm. They're watching your every word. They're watching your every move. You are their hero until you're not, until they no longer trust you as a hero, until they can no longer expect heroic things from you. They will go find another hero. They will. My encouragement to you is be that hero. Right. Man, don't be the person your children can resent. No, be the person that that when they're younger, man, you're caring for them. As they get older, you're coaching them, you're training them up in the way they should go, and you're largely doing that by living it yourself. And then, man, when they get to an age, hopefully you've built up enough relational equity. Hopefully you've built up enough trust. Hopefully they know that you love them so that they'll come to you in the good and the bad. They'll come to you with questions. They'll come to you for wisdom. They'll come to you for guidance. I'm telling you, when I am 60, 70 years old, the greatest honor would be my grown children, my grown daughter, my grown sons coming to me for advice and wisdom because they know, man, I can trust my father because what he says, he believes. What he says, he practices. Babe, I want that. And I hold me accountable. I'm giving mm-hmm. you permission to hold me accountable in that, which you do. Right. And I love that, and I'm grateful for that. Well, and I appreciate you saying, you know, as a couple that we can say, hold us like each other accountable. That's right. And do it out of love and not out of resentment or... Yeah. You know, all that kind of stuff. hundred percent. So if we're landing the plane and you're listening today, you're watching and you're saying, man, my child resents me. Um, it's probably not because something you've done. It might be because of something you haven't done. Hmm. You know, if you're feeling resented by your child or you're feeling like your child doesn't trust you or doesn't like you right now, um, I would offer you a couple of simple steps. Go to your child and just recognize it. Hey, um, I know there's tension between us. I know there's distrust between us. There's obviously some friction between us. Um, if it's anything I've caused, man, speak freely to that, and I just want you to know I'm sorry. Just admit to him, man, I'm I'm sorry, and 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 I want to be a person that 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 what I preach, I practice, mm-hmm. right? And then step into that. Start living that out. You don't. You don't tear down trust overnight, and you can't rebuild it overnight, right? right? It's going to take time, but I'm telling you, you can repair the relationship. You can do that by loving them well, mm-hmm. right, by um, by being gracious and kind and asking for forgiveness and then living out what you practice. We do it every day. Yeah. How often do I have to ask our kids to forgive me for something I've done? Every time. I feel like like every Saturday. When I get frustrated because they're not cleaning up the rooms and they're not cleaning up the play place, and then I go off, right, because I've stepped on a Lego and it hurts so bad, and I get mad, right, and I speak out of anger or I act, I lack gentleness, and I got to set the kids down, and what do I say? I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Like, like I shouldn't have done that. I need your forgiveness, and I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to do better. Just got to keep doing it. Saturday's another day. So we're gonna have another Saturday, Lord willing, He don't come back. And if he comes back, it's all going to be good anyways. Ain't no more Legos to step on at that point. Heaven's Lego, all the Legos are just built when you get to heaven. It's amazing. You open the box, they just build. It's not in Scripture. No, it's not. <laughs> I hope, I hope, babe, 20, 30, 40 years from now that our children um, trust us. Oh, I think so. Yeah, yeah. And I think they know we love them, right? Oh, of course. We tell them all the time. All the time. 
Yeah, yeah. I hope I hope they trust us, and I think they're going to. And I think they're going to because the way we love one another and the way we live. And that'd be my encouragement for everybody. We'll see you next week.